I'm in the TechCrunch studio today with Josh Felzer, co-founder of Freestyles, and is the uh, f former co-founder of Spinner and Grouper. Josh, welcome to the studio. Thanks. Great to so, be here. You and David, your partner, founded Freestyle a number of years ago. You guys were both uh, entrepreneurs that built and sold companies and decided to become what you would call institutional angels, right? How did you guys make the transition over from you know, operator, entrepreneurs, into <clears throat> investors? With uh, great difficulty in the beginning. It was a little hard to kind of give up control, accept that we're, you know, we're kind of advising, not running. And so we spent two years investing our own capital to make sure we actually wanted to do this, we're decent at it, and, uh, and we could you know, find companies that would let us invest in them. So in that two-year kind of test you did, how many investments did you guys make? 21. Wow. Yeah. OK, that's a lot. And you kind of evenly split between the two of you? Most of the time, yeah, evenly split. Right? And is it one of you is doing an investment here, or are you, you, you kind of both co-managing an investment, or how does that work? We have to divide and conquer because we can't both be active in 21 companies. That's just, uh, hmm. that's just too much for any one person to handle. And what, what types of companies broadly were you looking at? Does it run the gamut of mobile web <clears throat> uh, infrastructure or the application layer? or? So back, so our strategy kind of back then a little different, yeah. you know, it was a little different and I think we just, we invested in what we thought was cool. Um, it was our own capital, we were learning, we kind of weren't as focused on kind of some of the discipline, uh, the more disciplined kind of requirements we have today. But, you know, we usually what, we looked at what we did as entrepreneurs, we invested ourselves when we started companies in, in ideas we thought were important and cool and that we believed in passionately. And so we kind of focused the same way on, on investing back then. Okay, and so after the two years, you guys got back together, and well, not got back together, but- Reunited. Reunited and <laughs> decided to raise a fund, right, right which turned into Freestyle. Right. So tell right. us just, just briefly what, what your guys' model is, because it is a little bit different than <coughs> what other people would think of as institutional angel funds. Well, actually, Dave and I never separated. In fact, sure, my sure. wife calls him my mister, which is kind of, ah. uh, <laughs> right. kind of odd. But we've been working together for 14 years, sure, 15 sure. years now. So it's, it's, uh, I thought we might separate, but we can't seem <laughs> to you know, stay yeah. apart from each other. Um, so, so I think we, you know, how do we work together now? Someone asked me, what was the question again? Well, I meant like you, you went out and actually raised a fund, right? right. And so how, what is the model you, you raised the fund on? Because the model's a little right. bit different. So yeah. we, we act like angels, but we're backed by institutions. And so I think that was the pitch that we kind of gave to LPs because we're, we're operators first and foremost, we're entrepreneurs. Once you are an entrepreneur, you never stop being one, even if, even if you're, you know, you kind of in your daily life have to behave in a different style, you still have that in your blood. Mm. And so I think we're exciting, you know, we're attractive to entrepreneurs because we have been through what they've been through. And actually our first company was kind of a, you know, a, an incredible ride from the very beginning and it just, we were number one, the first internet music company, we were first, stayed first all the time, all the while till we sold it. And the second one, we actually had to pivot midway. Mm. So we've been through, you know, both kinds of companies. Fortunately, both had good outcomes. Right. Um, and so, now, what I want to get into in this discussion and just hear you know, your opinion is that it seems like there are a lot of uh, seed or angel options uh, for founders out there, right? I mean, now when I look at announcements, you know, it, it went from being a few, you know, a company raising angel money from a few people to right. a few more people. Now it takes up two or three paragraphs of people, right? And it just seemed to explode in the last three months. Um, how do you guys... You know, think about that as you know, you're only making each of you guys are only making six investments a year, right. spending a lot of time with the people you're backing, right? I mean, you're almost operating with them, right? So it's a pretty intimate arrangement. How do you think about the market that way based on your model? Well, there are two. So I'll start with kind of how we make our investment decision, and it's okay. really simple. Okay. We imagine that we are co-founding this company with the entrepreneur, which means we have to really like the entrepreneur and we have to be passionate about the business. And so we pass on companies that look like they're probably great ideas, but uh, we just don't care about them. And so that's, that's a big difference between us and some other folks. And I think it's, it's, a, it's not the only way to invest, but it's the only way we can invest. Um, once we invest, we typically, kind of our brand is that we are at least, you know, if we're not the most active, we're kind of tied for the most active in any company we invest in. And so we pick companies where we can actually add value uh, if we can't add value, we're not going to be the most active, and therefore we're kind of not doing what we want to do. Right. And so when you and Dave meet an entrepreneur and you feel the idea meets your test and you guys want to jump in, I mean, the understanding is you guys are almost going to go in there as operators 
right. right with with the company and sort of get it off the ground and get it to a certain point most of the time right. so we so I always ask the entrepreneur this question I say so if your phone rings and it's me are you excited are you neutral or are you like aghast right so it's you're one of those three, yeah. and and I feel and I feel the same way. If the entrepreneur calls me, am I excited, interested? Mm. Am I neutral? I'm like, Ugh, you know, meh. And so, so you take a real gut, a gut call on, on these kind of things well, when it, it comes to it, that. I mean, it's it's more. You know, am I interested in working with the person? Am I passionate about the idea? And if, if those are both yes, then I'm going to be interested in whenever that entrepreneur calls. And I think the entrepreneur should think about their investor in that way, because you don't want you don't want to dread you know kind of your investor your investors, you know, picture on your phone. Sure. You want to be excited or interested when they call you. So I think that's a, that's some, that's a, that's a, if I can answer yes to that, we don't invest. And then how long does it take to kind of get to know a founder, right? Because what you're talking about is a little more interpersonal, right? right. And these seed rounds seem to happen and people want to raise a seed round in three days or something, right. or maybe even sooner. Like, how do you, you know, how do you deal with that? Because it sounds like you're taking a more careful approach. We don't do that anymore. And we don't invest like that anymore. I think with, yeah. our, own, with our own capital, we did that a few times. And and actually, the few times we did it didn't really work out very well. So, mm. so we have, um, we're fortunate that all of our companies are, you know, none of our companies have shut down. Yeah. But there are a couple of our companies we invested in quickly, and, and they're kind of not, they, they haven't worked out as well. So I think we, we just say no to that. We're disciplined. There is tremendous deal flow. And I think we just, when that happens, actually YC, for example, you know, every year I go to YC I, and I meet an entrepreneur who, you know, where there's mutual interest, and I say, listen, we like you. We like your idea. We're never going to make a decision in a day or two yeah. days or three days. It's going right. to take multiple meetings. If that doesn't work for you, right. then let's just like say, hey, great to know each other. Let's move on. Sure. We're very upfront about that. Sure, right. So you kind of dampen that speed right, right. off the bat. Right. And, and so how are you guys now, since you and David are both you know, proven entrepreneurs, you have did your experiment, now you have your institutional angel fund, you must be thinking entrepreneurially about how your fund may either change or stay the same course, right? How are you guys right. looking ahead two or three years? Well, I think it's, it's a, you know, this, this, uh, the business that we're in is, you know, it, the number of people in our business, it, it grows every day. And so, you know, VCs, great, you know, great people that we like, like Aileen and, and, uh, and Bill Tai are, you know, they're examples of VCs that are starting funds, and I think that's going to be happening more and more. It's an exciting place to be, but also that means that it's going to be even more important to differentiate in a way that matters. And so right, right now we're, we're kind of the... You know, we're in that bucket of, you know, entrepreneurs who now invest, and that's a good bucket to be in. But I don't think that's going to be enough. I think you're going to have to figure out how to either specialize or, or kind of create an environment that attracts entrepreneurs to, you know, to kind of be incubated. Uh, I think you have to think about the world even, you know, in an even more specialized way because I just think there's so much capital coming to the market. It's going to raise, you know, seed valuations and. Uh, we're very disciplined about how we invest. We have, you know, we, we don't share what our kind of what our ranges are, but but we actually have, you know, a range for entrepreneurs who who have yet to generate real revenue, and obviously a higher range for those that have. Sure. Now let's. It'd be, here's an interesting hypothetical question. Let's say you woke up tomorrow and said, "I'm going to be an entrepreneur again. I'm going to uh, hit pause on freestyle." And now you're in this market, given all the entrepreneurial knowledge you have and also the investing knowledge, what would you want out of your seed stage investor? Well, first of all, it's a great time to be a seed entrepreneur, right? an entrepreneur right. at, that, at that level. Right. And I think what, what I, you know, it depends where your skill set is kind of lacking or weaker. So. Let's say it's you. You want to start the next, you have an idea for an application and you're really passionate about it. Right. And now you know a lot of people and you've seen the market on both sides. Well, what I, would you be looking for as a, as a founder looking for seed capital you know, the second half of 2012. Right. So uh, I would want an investor who is going to have my back. Okay. Someone who is transparent. Okay. Someone I can trust. I'd start with trust. Uh, we've all, you know, all of us, most of us who've started companies have actually had bad experiences with at least one investor. I have, um, you know, and I would want to fi- establish, you know, someone, I want to find someone who's trans- who is transparent about their agenda because um, they're going to have an agenda that may be different than mine. So that's first. I think secondly, I'd find someone who can, uh, you know, not drink my Kool-Aid, you know, can think objectively about my business and not just kind of, you know, I, I'll drink the Kool-Aid, my founder, co-founders will drink the Kool-Aid, but I want my investor to be objective and honest and direct. Okay. 
I think those are areas that I'd look for the most. Okay. And also, you know, I think, you know, areas where, where I am not as strong, you know, maybe the, you know, kind of uh, building the right tech stack. And I think those are areas where, fortunately, Dave, my co-founder, is strong, sure. which is why we align so well together. Sure. But I personally would want someone who, you know, my lead investor who could, you know, kind of help connect me to other smart people that, you know, that could make sure that I don't make any, you know, technical embarrassments. Right. And so let's say you, you find the right investor, uh, Dave helps you out with the stack, and you're, right. you're moving on along in a great point. What's going to be important as you, you, you know, you and you, this hypothetical company starts going right. out for an A round? What's right. important there, right? Because if you have a lot of <coughs> angels, or you know, uh, the shareholders in your company are spread out, right. who's going to help? Like, do you anticipate marketing the deal, right. or do you want your investor involved, or how do you think about that? So I think I, um, you know. When I said before that it's a great time to be a seed entrepreneur, yeah. it's a tougher time to be an entrepreneur raising their Series A and Series B. I mean, that's, that is, you know, entre- investors are more demanding, the pools of capital a little smaller, and I think it's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's tightening up a little bit there. So I want a seed investor who isn't going to be conflicted in my Series A. I'm going to want a seed investor who has, you know, a good network of VCs and is going to work with me to kind of pass the baton. Because, you know, what we do as, as a firm is we actually don't, we kind of pass the baton on the Series A, and we want to pass it to someone who, you know, who we can really trust is going to take over well and is going to be active and, and ha- you know, can build that trust in the entrepreneur that we had. So I think we, we do, it is important for your seed investor to have, to be involved in your Series A. Not over-marketing you, because then you lose the, you kind of become less... Uh, uh, trusted by the by the VCs, you're you're kind of pitching on behalf of the company, yeah. but being honest about where the company is. Sure. But really being helpful. And so what now? Now, if we go back into your role currently, uh, you know, at Freestyle, and you're helping a lot of companies, what are you seeing in the A and B market right now? What are what are the larger investors looking for that the the majority of seed companies aren't meeting those requirements? Where, what's right. the mismatch there? Well, it's not it's not they're looking for something different. Okay. They're just looking for more. Uh, more audience, more revenue, um, you know, more partnerships if that's part of your business model. They're looking for more. You know, it's certainly easier if the business you're in is social, viral, or has a network effect. I mean, those are things that seem to get funded at, you know, fairly easily. But, you know, they want to see more of, you know, revenue, audience, partnerships. Whereas before, you kind of, your series, you know, series A, you know, your today, you can see in series A are kind of blurring, right? So yeah. you kind of have these larger rounds. And so your next round is kind of almost a Series B. And the requirements for raising a Series B are, are much more stringent. You have to really prove you're onto something pretty big and maybe actually be big. And I think before you didn't have to, that pressure, same pressure wasn't on you. Great, great. And so final question is yeah. for um, founders out there who are currently and for the rest of 2012 going out to raise a seed round, what kind of advice would you give them, independent of freestyle right, right now, right. right? Because they can probably have their choice Right. Of, of what to do, right? If they're, right. Well, most of them will have their choice of what to do. What would be the number, you know, the <clears throat> sort of end of the day advice you'd give them? I, I think it, I, I, I'll say it again, because yeah. I think this is, this is, sums sure. it up in the kind of the clearest way possible. When the investor calls you, you see his or her picture on your phone. Are you excited, interested? Are you neutral? Or are you meh? Answer, there's only way to, one way to answer that in picking your lead VC. Great. Thanks a lot, Josh, and good luck to you guys. Thanks, man.